Hello, lovely people. I hope you're having a really delightful day and, uh, you know, upright. If you're new here and wondering why there's a weirdly 1950s redhead girl lying on the floor, hi, I'm Jessica and I have POTS. What on earth is that? And how can you tell if you have it? Well, keep watching to find out. POTS symptoms can be frightening and uncomfortable, so I wanted to make something to calmly discuss symptoms you may not even realise mean something, and hopefully to just help to feel better. In this video, I'll be giving you a brief idea of the condition. Thanks, Tilly. In this video, I'll be giving you a brief idea of the condition, how it affects people, signs that you might have it, and where to go to get diagnosed. If you're completely new to this topic, I really suggest watching my earlier video, which I'm going to link in the description as well as in the card above. If you enjoy light-hearted and amusing videos with an educational slant, then make sure you're subscribed. And remember to click the bell icon as that is the best way to be notified of new content. Much love to my notification squad, I see you. So, as I mentioned, about a year ago I made a video explaining what postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome is in detail, and since then one of my most frequent questions I've been asked is, how do I know if I've got it? To which able-bodied people may respond, of course you know if you have it. <laughs> God, I wish bodies worked that way. Unfortunately, sometimes it can be hard to judge these things, and that can be very upsetting. So whilst I can't reply to every individual message and email about POTS, I really do hope that this video can be of some sort of comfort to you. You're doing great, darling. Don't worry. Even more confusing is that each case of POTS is different. You can develop POTS suddenly, or it can come on gradually over time. Sometimes it can develop suddenly after a viral illness or traumatic event, or during and after pregnancy. In many cases, the cause of the problem with the nervous system in people with POTS is unknown. Not helpful. The most common age range for POTS is 13 to 50, and it occurs predominantly in women, with five women for every one man being affected. Teenagers who develop POTS often find that it gradually disappears a few years later, so yay, I told you it's going to be okay. Although, if you develop it as a result of a separate condition, that's obviously going to be a very different story. It's commonly found in association with poisoning, either through alcohol or certain metals, or inheriting a faulty gene that causes too much of the fight or flight hormone, noradrenaline, to be produced. Then there's joint hypermobility syndrome, hi, that's me, which is an inherited condition that results in unusually flexible joints and abnormally elastic blood vessels. Other underlying conditions such as diabetes, amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, lupus, Sorgan syndrome and cancer. Oh, you just impressed thyself. And our old friend, chronic fatigue syndrome. If you have one of these things, then yes, this video is indeed the place for you. But even if you don't, you may still have POTS. Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome is a condition that affects the blood flow in your body. People who have it note that our circulatory systems go wild at the merest invitation, particularly when standing up or sitting up. That's what orthostatic means. Primary symptoms of an orthostatic intolerance are lightheadedness, fainting, and an uncomfortable rapid increase in heartbeat. I spent years trying to explain to various doctors that I could feel my heart beating too fast and that it was sometimes so bad and painful I felt like I was about to have a heart attack, to which I was told that all people sometimes suddenly become aware of their heart beating, but that it's completely normal, and I was just totally making too much of a big deal about it. As if I somehow couldn't tell my heart was beating faster than at other times. I mean, it's my heart. It's in my body. I think I know what that feels like. Why does it happen? Well, normally when you sit up or stand up, gravity pulls some of the blood down to your belly area, hands and feet. In response, your blood vessels down there quickly narrow, and your heart rate increases slightly to maintain blood flow to the heart and the brain and prevent your blood pressure from dropping. Amazingly, this is all done without you needing to think about it by the autonomic nervous system, the nervous system in charge of the automatic body functions. It's the same thing that keeps you breathing without you having to consciously think, breathe every two seconds, and then stops you from dying when you get really engrossed in the sims and forget. When you have POTS, the autonomic nervous system has effectively just been given the latest Sims 4 expansion pack and has better things to do with its time. There's a drop in blood supply to the heart and brain when you become upright and the heart races to compensate for this. For me though, POTS isn't just about the motion of standing and the change in state. It also hits me as a decrease in blood pressure over time. So I'm fine for a little bit, but then just slowly feel the blood draining away from my head and oh, yeah, that's my face on the floor. 
There are actually various forms of POTS, so if you don't have all of the signs I'm about to list, that doesn't mean you 100% don't have it, you may just have a type that doesn't involve that. And please again remember that all cases are different. I think it would be really helpful if people who have already been diagnosed list some of their symptoms in the comments along with the ones that they don't have. It's so important to me that our little community is able to come together and support each other and really just to make people feel less alone. Now, signs of POTS. There's a very big sign. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I couldn't resist that terrible joke. I'm ashamed of me too. Number one, the most common and obvious symptom is dizziness, lightheadedness, or near fainting when standing up. But it can also occur with prolonged sitting, and as I said earlier, for me, there is that relation with just standing up for a long time. Two, approximately 30% of people with POTS experience fainting, known as blackouts, also known as syncope. I have a wonderful habit of picking things up from the floor, standing, and then just woof, backwards we go. Three, palpitations. The sensation of your heart high tilts. The sensation of your heart pounding in your chest. And no, it doesn't feel like just noticing your heart pumping. It feels like, oh my god, I'm going to pass out and die if my heart doesn't count the hell down. <sighs> I'm also gonna throw chest pain in here. Four. Approximately two-thirds of those with POTS have orthostatic headaches, which means they occur as a result of being upright and may be caused by reduced blood supply to the brain. Most people with POTS also have migraine type headaches. Yay! You may also be like me and have such low blood pressure that your blood doesn't really go anywhere unless you keep hydrated to a ridiculous degree. People often comment, oh, you have such good skin, to which, yes, I drink eight liters of water a day. Dirt doesn't have a chance. Just blast it out of my pores. I don't know how skincare works, but yeah, sounds right. Five, tiredness and weakness are both really common symptoms, although they're terribly hard to quantify. I feel like they're both things that only you yourself can know. It just isn't possible to grasp how it feels from the outside. Six, brain fog. I have a whole video about brain fog that explains what it is. So click the link in the card above to watch that. But in brief, it's when your brain feels so clouded that you can't properly bring your thoughts together. Seven, shakiness, but not just any shakiness. You know when you catch a bug or you have a really horrific hangover and there's that split second before you vomit when you feel so vulnerable, like your whole body is an open scab and you know you have absolutely no control over what is about to happen? That is the shakiness I'm talking about, except it lasts a lot longer. Eight, if you find yourself getting short of breath after just standing up, or exerting yourself slightly, this may be you. If you know the feeling of your lips turning blue, this is probably you. Nine, digestive problems. Nausea is common. Other symptoms include diarrhea, constipation, bloating, abdominal pain, and vomiting. Many people with POTS are told that they have irritable bowel syndrome. 10, excessive glare, blurred, or tunnel vision. You may know well something that is called the black curtain. That's when you're in the process of fainting or about to, and this dark curtain just descends over your eyes. You may notice that feeling hot, eating, strenuous exercise, and your period make symptoms much worse. Personally, I am slaved monthly by my period. It's, it's really awful and unnecessary. If those all sound like you, then yes, you may have POTS, but don't worry, in many cases, it can be treated through either diet, medication, and a little gentle exercise, by which I mean cut out sugar now, you will feel much better once your body adjusts to life without sugar, okay? Of course, if there is an underlying cause to your POTS, finding and treating this may also lead to symptoms subsiding. And as I mentioned at the start, for many people, the condition merely goes away. Hello. A quick side note before we talk about steps to get diagnosed. Are you just part of this now? All right. You may be thinking, gosh, Jessica, that list of symptoms sounds a lot like the symptoms of this other medical problem that I have, to which I can only say, say. It can be very confusing when POTS is a symptom of a condition that you already have, or else you have a number of overlapping conditions. How do you isolate which symptoms fall under the POTS heading? POTS is classified as secondary if you have a condition that already affects your blood pressure, blood volume, or blood sugar. For instance, diabetes gastrointestinal disorders that are associated with a low fluid intake due to nausea or fluid loss through diarrhea and a range of autoimmune diseases. Prolonged bed rest or deconditioning can also set off the 
Spots can also occur in all types of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a hereditary connective tissue disorder marked by loose hypermobile joints prone to subluxations and dislocations. Let's move on to the steps to get diagnosed. Firstly, see your GP or primary care physician if you think you have POTS, but bear in mind that they may not know what the hell it actually is, so it's wise to print out a list of symptoms from an official government site. NHS England has a really great one, pretty sure it still applies in other countries because that's how bodies work. It can also be misdiagnosed as anxiety or panic attacks, so really make sure to be clear about your mental state at the time when asked, particularly if you have POTS-like symptoms when feeling a variety of ways but doing the same physical thing. I once stood up and fainted, just as the teacher happened to mention homework, not that I even heard her, and boy, was it harder to then get help at school for anything except counselling, which I really didn't need. Once you've talked to your GP, they will likely refer you onwards to a specialist who can run you through a series of tests, some of them weird. A diagnosis of POTS is made if your heart rate increases by over 30 beats per minute after 10 minutes of standing, or if it increases to more than 120 beats per minute. I would advise getting hold of a Fitbit or similar so you can check your own heart rate before going to your GP, as that's just another piece of the puzzle to help an onwards referral. You should then have a range of tests to confirm the diagnosis and rule out other conditions. These include a tilt table test, where your heart rate and blood pressure are measured while lying on a bed, and then the bed is just tilted into a more upright position. Or the active stand test, when again your heart rate and blood pressure are measured after lying down, immediately upon standing, and after like two, five, 10 minutes later. A test of your heart's electrical activity called an electrocardiogram or ECG and finally a 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure and uh, heart rate monitoring which is just when a hospital gives you a small device attached to your belt that takes regular readings while you're doing normal activities. Again though you could just get a Fitbit. I feel like that would save the hospital money too. Remember no matter where you are on your journey to get diagnosed you are valid and you are not alone. I hope this video has been able to help in some way and that if you're new here you'll consider sticking around. Please share this video with anyone you feel could benefit, even the able-bodied people in your life who aren't entirely sure what this POTS thing is. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah.